New videos every day. Did you know that there are some simple changes that you can make to recipes and they won't compromise the flavor or taste and they're going to make them healthier, lower calorie, and they're going to make you feel better? Well, today we're going to talk about 10 simple things you can do to make recipes better. Number 10, use vegetable broths to thin creams and creamy sauces. Now this is a really simple thing to do. You can buy vegetable broth already pre-packaged at the grocery store, so you don't have to you know, boil any vegetables, you don't have to worry about that. And then you, all you have to do is take half of the amount of cream or fat that is required uh, for a recipe and just replace it with vegetable broth. Now it will make the sauce you know, less creamy, but you won't lose the flavor. I think actually vegetable broth makes things taste richer, which is fabulous because it has a lot of nutrients in it. And, uh, and then it's going to be so much lower in calories. Number nine, replace half the fat that a recipe calls for with applesauce. So, for example, if you have a cake recipe that calls for eight tablespoons of butter, which is a stick of butter, you can replace four of the tablespoons with, you know, half a cup of applesauce. And it's a very simple way to cut the calories without compromising the moistness or the texture of the cake. And I think it actually um, provides still a great flavor, and I don't think you're going to miss the butter or the calories. Number eight use non-fat plain yogurt in place of sour cream or mayo depending on the recipe. So I have a um, coffee cake recipe passed on down to me from some relatives and it was a traditional sour cream coffee cake. So instead of sour cream I use non-fat plain yogurt which provides a lot of healthy bacteria for your intestines and then also it's going to have lower calories. So it's an excellent way to still have a great tasting cake, reduce the calories, and then get some healthy beneficial bacteria. And then another example is I have a, a homemade creamy vinaigrette dressing that was a recipe passed down to me from family members and it called for a lot of mayonnaise. So instead of using all mayonnaise, I use half mayonnaise and half of the non-fat plain yogurt and it gives it a lighter taste which is really great and uh, then it still provides that same creamy texture for a dressing. Number seven, drain and trim all the fat off of uh, raw meat before you cook it and then drain it definitely after you cook meat. Three tablespoons of grease, which is sort of the typical amount that can be left in a pan maybe after you brown hamburger meat, is equivalent to 342 calories. So if you you know, if you're not willing to just go over to the sink and, you know, run the hamburger meat through a strainer, you're actually going to be getting a ton of calories, unnecessary calories, um, that you could easily get rid of just by draining your meats. Number six, when you cook homemade soups or stews, uh, after you cook them, let them chill in the refrigerator and then take them out the next time when you're going to eat them before you preheat scrape off that top layer of fat and you know it's really difficult to do to remove fat from a stew before you refrigerate it so this way all the fat rises to the top and you can skim it off the soup still maintains a great flavor but you're you know taking basically skimming off calories off the top of the soup so very easy to do very quick to do and you're going to reduce the calories number five add protein powder to baked products that you make at home so if I'm going to make, you know, cookies or a cake, I will use two scoops of protein powder if a recipe is going to serve six. So if a cake is going to have six servings, I'll use two scoops of protein powder. It's a great way to add additional protein and actually you can cut away some of the flour too because the protein powder is going to add bulk to the recipe. And, um, and that way, you know, even though you're still wanting to enjoy the cake or whatever you're baking, you know, you can still add a little bit of protein and know that you're getting some health benefits from making a simple change. Number four, replace sugar that a recipe calls for with stevia, honey, um, or succonat. And succonat is your whole cane sugar that sub actually the water has been subtracted. 
So it's a, it's a great replacement for refined sugar. Now, one thing to keep in mind with um, replacing sugar with honey is that one cup of sugar equals three-fourths cup of honey. So when you are substituting honey for sugar, make sure that you do keep those measurements correct. And then also reduce your, the, the temperature in your oven by 25 degrees for every cup of honey that you're using. And that way you are not going to overcook whatever you're baking and it's still going to taste great. Number three, replace heavy cream with two tablespoons of tapioca, one cup of water, and one fourth cup of low fat, low sodium ricotta cheese. Now this is a great thing to do. You're not gonna compromise the taste or the texture of the recipe that you're using. So what you wanna do is you wanna put the tapioca and the water into a small saucepan and let it sit for about an hour. And then after that hour is up, you wanna bring it to a boil. And then when it comes to a boil, cut it back down to simmer and let it simmer for two to three minutes. And then after that's done, you wanna take it from the heat and put it in a blender and then gradually add the ricotta cheese and you're going to emulsify it in the blender. So you're going to blend it until it gets the consistency that you need for your recipe. So this is very easy to do and you're not going to compromise you know, the taste that fat brings to a recipe and you're not going to compromise the flavor either. Number two, replace one fourth cup of flour with one fourth cup of ground flaxseed. And I've talked to a few people about, you know, incorporating flaxseed into their diet and they've kind of talked about how they don't like it or they don't want to know what to put it in. But if you are baking at home or making really anything that calls for flour, all you have to do is substitute one fourth cup of flaxseed for flour and then you're adding all those nutrients and all that fiber to your diet and you're not going to even really, you know, you're not going to taste the difference. It does have a slightly heartier taste to it, but once you've eaten that a few times, actually I, I find that I begin to crave it and if I don't put the flaxseed in there, I, I miss it and I know that it's not in there. So very easy to do. You can buy the already pre-ground flaxseed meal so you don't have to worry with the seeds. And number one, add vegetable purees to all of your recipes. Jessica Seinfeld, she is the wife of Jerry Seinfeld, recently wrote a book entitled Deceptively Delicious. And it is one of the best cookbooks, especially if you're a parent that struggles with getting your kids to eat healthy foods. And it goes through several simple recipes that you can use. And some of the things she goes over is, you know, making chocolate cake and using beet puree. Um, making chicken tenders at home, which, you know, I don't know a kid who doesn't like chicken tenders or, you know, chicken nuggets. And you put broccoli puree on it. So it's a great way to get your kids to eat vegetables. They won't even realize it. They won't taste the difference. And then, you know, the simple things that you can use, we've already talked about in a previous video. You use the rice steamer to steam your vegetables. Use a food processor to puree the vegetables into that um, consistency to use in recipes. And then you just refrigerate it, and then you pull it out of the refrigerator when you want to use it in a recipe. Great way to get nutrients, and you don't even taste the difference. So here are 10 simple things that you can do to recipes that maybe you've, you know, cooked for 10 years, but simple changes that will cut calories without compromising the flavor or taste and adding nutrients in as well. So I really appreciate you watching and I will definitely see you next time. And then also I want to thank all my subscribers. Keep subscribing and keep watching. I'll see you next time.